Before we start our experiment with kinetics, we're going to first construct a Beer's Law calibration curve for our crystal violet. So I've prepared some standard solutions over here. We go from 25 micromolar to 20, 15, 10, and 5. And we're going to use the LabQuest 2 to plot them. Uh, before we do that, we should calibrate. So if you go under sensors and calibrate and select your spectrophotometer, it will bring up a thing. You can take a cuvette of distilled water. You want to take the side that's not the web side, of course, and put the clear plastic side through there. And this is already warmed up for quite a bit. And so we're just going to click on finish calibration. And that's going to take our baseline and set it to zero for all of the different wavelengths. So now it should give us a reading of zero, but uh, currently we don't have it set to read because it's on full spectrum. So we're going to now go ahead and zoom in so we can follow along nicely. So let's go back here. So we're going to click on mode where it says full spectrum and we're going to change that to events with entry. We want to plot concentration versus absorbance. So the machine's going to read the absorbance for us and we're going to manually type in the concentrations. And these are going to be in micromolar. Okay, and we want to change our wavelength. So I'm going to change the wavelength to 590. And if you don't know what the wavelength is, you can always plug in under full spectrum and see what the peak wavelength is. So we're going to have play now. Take out our blank. And I'm going to put in my first sample of the 25 micromolar into the spectrophotometer. And when I do that, the absorbance goes up. And when it steadies, I want to hit keep and type in 25 micromolar. Okay, so now that that's steadied, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put in the next one, the 20 micromolar. Okay, and again, I want to wait for it to steady up here. And when it does, I'm going to hit keep and type in 20. Oops. Okay, and I'm going to continue doing that until I have all of my data. Looks like I might have one bad data point. We're going to hit stop here so that we can analyze our data. And if we go under analyze and curve fit and select our graph, we can add in a line of best fit. I'm going to do proportional. So it looks like this data point has brought down our, our line a little bit here, but nothing too crazy. And so we end up with a slope of 0 0.0537. And what that means is that our absorbance, the y value, is equal to our concentration in micromolar times 0.0537. So we can use this value to convert between absorbance and concentration. And that way, when we want to go through and find the rate law later, we'll be able to be able to make that change. So now we're ready to begin our kinetics experiment. And we've set up two situations to run side by side so you can see and compare. So we have a 25 micromolar crystal vat solution for both. And over here, we have 0.05 molar hydroxide. And then over here, we have 0.1 molar hydroxide. So what we're doing is we've doubled the concentration of hydroxide while keeping the volumes constant. So we're going to mix the two, and we're going to run. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and zoom in on our vernier so we can make sure that we're on the right setting. So for mode, you want to be under time-based. And then for the duration, you want this to go a little longer than what it usually starts off with. So it usually starts off at 200. So I'm going to change it to 500 because I have a higher concentration. But depending on your initial concentration of hydroxide, if it's lower, you might want to run this for a little bit longer. And then we've changed our wavelength to be the same for both. So they're both at 590 nanometers. And as soon as we hit play, it'll be ready to start collecting data. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this. 
And we're going to mix our two solutions here. And the crystal violet, we have a little bit of time. We don't need to rush to get it into the cuvette, but we do want to get it in there somewhat expediently. Okay, and it's now absorbing, and so we'll go ahead and hit play. So you can note that our absorbance is about half of our maximum value from our calibration curve because we've diluted it with the hydroxide solution. And we're going to go ahead and mix these as well. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and hit play on this as well. So now we have both of these running. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one and stack it on top of the other one. And we'll go ahead and zoom in so we can speed this up and see how this turns out. So if we look now, we see that this one has reacted significantly more than this one has. And so we can see that on our graphs as well, I'll zoom back in. So here we've seen that this is mostly reacted, that's the solution right here, which has now gone to pretty much colorless. And this one is reacting much, much slower as the hydroxide concentration was less, and so we can still see a purple hue to that a little bit, although it is lighter. So we can go ahead and stop these now and run our analysis. So what we want to do is we want to figure out if it's zero, first, or second order. Now, the tricky thing with these kinetics experiments here is that really when we're going through and doing our analysis, there we go, that we're not able to actually look at the full kinetics of it because we are assuming that the hydroxide concentration has remained so constant in this, that there's so much excess hydroxide in this solution and that there's so much excess hydroxide solution in this that the change in crystal violet with the reaction keeps that hydroxide amount constant and therefore does not influence the rate at all. So we've extracted the hydroxide from it. But you can see that the hydroxide does in fact influence the rate. So we can't come up with a rate constant from this because we're ignoring that. But what we can do is we can go through and see with respect to crystal violet whether the reaction is first, second, or zero order. So we can tell immediately that it's not zero order. If it had been zero order, we would have seen a straight line of absorbance versus time. Okay, so what we can do is we can go through and analyze the other ones by doing some curve fits. So I can go through and I can check to see if it matches a natural log exponent, which of course would translate back to a, a natural log of concentration or absorbance versus time. And so the fact that we see this kind of perfect linear reg or regression here means that that's probably first order. Okay, now, uh, I'm not 100% sure on this, but for the power, I believe that if this had been a second order, we would see an exponent of negative 1, and we do not. But what we can do now is we can go through and we can now analyze our data a little better by going through and doing some manipulations. So on the vernier, if you go under where the table marking is, uh, we can go and under the table, we can do a new calculated column. And so we can go ahead, whoop. Looks like I picked the wrong one. Calculated. Oh. Touch screens. Okay. So for our equation, we can do the natural log of our absorbance. So this is going to automatically calculate the natural log of the data points for us, and we see a pretty linear result here. And we can also put a line of best fit on that. And we end up with this result and so we can then have now technically if this had been concentration versus time natural log of concentration versus time this slope would have been our rate constant we have absorbance versus time um, and we're also not factoring in the hydroxide concentration but we do see that this is first order with respect to our crystal violet
Okay, so what we want to now do is we want to go through and do the same analysis down here. So we're going to go into the table mode. We're going to do a new calculated column. So under natural log there. And we end up with a similar thing. And when we do the curve fit on this, we're going to see that the slope has changed from the hydroxide concentration changing. So when we compare the slopes, we have negative 0.26 here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the intercept. So we have the two slopes here. We have negative 0.0075, and we have negative 0.0036. So if we look, we're seeing a ratio of 2 to 1. So the double, the hydroxide concentration, ended up increasing our rate by a factor of 2. And so that would indicate that we have a first-order relationship for crystal violet and a first-order relationship for hydroxide. So what we could do is we could figure out what the slope is from that first to second point, and from that we could calculate a rate. We know the exponents of the concentration, and we know the initial concentrations of everything, so we could solve for what the rate constant is. Uh, we can do the same thing on our other data as well, and what that allows us to do is then calculate what the rate constant is, and then do the experiment again at different temperatures so that we can find the activation energy.